Hey everybody, it's Joe from Just Jeep It, and we got another great video, so tune in, stick around. Hey everybody, it's Joe from Just Jeep It. How's it going? Welcome to the channel. Uh, got a great video in store for you today. Uh, going to be going over the four hole uh, fuel injector upgrade. Uh, but before we do that, uh, a couple things I wanted to talk with you guys first. Uh, real quickly. Number one is we just hit a thousand subscribers last week. So uh, I, got, I, I can't imagine uh, ever hitting a, a, a thousand subscribers. So I really appreciate all of your subscribers, especially the OGs, uh, subscriber number two, three, four, ten, twenty. 10, uh, 20. But everybody, thank you very much for subscribing. It means a lot to me that uh, you're liking what I'm doing and you find value in what I'm doing. Uh, and you know, we have a lot of uh, videos uh, coming up uh, as I'm looking at my 92 uh, Cherokee in the garage. Um, we're doing floor pans for this right now. I have an idea for uh, strengthening the front uh, leaf spring uh, bracket. Uh, so I have some ideas I wanna run by you guys, see what you think about it. Um, but yeah, we got some great things uh, in store. So thank you for all the subscriptions. Every one of those I really appreciate and I hope that I can do quality videos for you to make more and more folks interested in what I'm doing and uh, you know spread the word got a lot of great stuff coming up so uh, if you haven't subscribed already please feel free to uh, hit the subscribe button and um, you know that'll uh, make sure you get, uh, get to see all this stuff happening uh, the 92 I got some great plans for that I haven't revealed everything yet but uh, I recently acquired some uh, some leaf springs from a good buddy of mine and um, I'm not gonna tell you all the details but uh, I had some really cool ideas so uh, stay tuned. You'll definitely want to subscribe. And uh, the second uh, thing I'd like to cover this morning is, and I'm making this video in the morning, um, is our friends at SpaceX. SpaceX had an awesome mission to the International Space Station, and they just had a splashdown a few days ago, uh, a flawless mission. Uh, Brian and your team, congratulations to you guys. You SpaceX guys and gals are really really doing an awesome job and you're making people very excited about space exploration again going to the moon going to mars uh it, it's it's just fa fascinating i've been a, a fan of of uh space travel and rockets apollo gemini mercury i mean it's it's, it's always been exciting to me so uh congratulations to all of the folks at spacex our friends at spacex brian great work and uh hopefully uh maybe if if, if you can sneak me and my brother in on a space flight, that'd be super cool. We won't tell anybody, I promise. Um, so, <laughs> uh, but like I said, uh, what we're gonna cover today is the uh, information about um, the four hole injectors, why uh, people do that, uh, what they're hoping to get from it. And it's, it's a pretty simple um, install. It basically needs uh, one tool, uh, maybe a screwdriver as well, uh, but a 10 millimeter socket to take off the fuel rail and all the mounting bolts, but it's super simple. This lighting's probably not that good, is it? Uh, well, here, well, it's not really gonna help my face, but it is what it is, people. Um, so we'll talk about that, you know, and and to be honest with you, you know, my goals for uh, the four hole fuel injectors, after reading all of the um, information about the benefits of it, um, I wanted to uh, get a couple things from it. Um, uh, not that the idle isn't smooth, but they say uh, smooth or idle, so I'd like to see if that's, if that's true. Uh, obviously, um, better fuel economy, right? Um, so I'll give you a little bit of idea. Um, I do a lot of highway driving in this Jeep, so my fuel economy isn't too bad. My miles per gallon is pretty good, um, but they, they claim that the uh, four-hole fuel injectors will make the uh, uh, miles per gallon go up. So let's see, what percentage? Is it 1%? Is it 10%? Uh, we'll see. Okay, so here's what we're kind of looking at as far as parts and tools. As you can see, this is a pretty straightforward job. Um, I got these fuel injectors that are remanufactured from our friends at K Suspension, and I will leave a link in the description for his website. The guy shipped it out super fast. Um, but this, uh, let's see, there's a, there's a Ford part number, right? Yeah, sorry, it's kind of not really. But yeah, these are Ford remanufactured uh, fuel injectors. Uh, he cleans the little pintles inside, and let's take a look at this hole. And as you can see, there are four little holes uh, for the fuel injector. So we're talking atomization here, right? So I don't have a single uh, pintle fuel injector to show you right now uh, because they're currently in the Jeep. But uh, just imagine instead of four holes, uh, just remove three and you're stuck with one. Um, so atomization, right? So, you know, fuel coming out of one hole versus fuel being sprayed out of four holes. Uh, atomization, right? 
Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And there has been a ton of research already done and in place. And this is not focusing. Uh, there's already been a ton of research uh, done, write-ups, technical specifications, um, fuel rate. And what I'll do is I'm going to put that in the description for you. Um, so I don't bore you with all of the uh, technical terms as EV1, EV6, things like that. So just a few technical things that I uh, had written down on this piece of paper here, so I would uh, get them straight. So uh, there are, I guess, two basic, I guess, let's start with the connectors first, right? So there was an EV1 connector, and that was from 87 to 98. Uh, and I'll put a picture of what the EV1 connectors look like. So those are on your like original Cherokees, right? Uh, the EV6 connector, just different connectors, that's all. Uh, it's from 99 to 01. And again, these are with the stock uh, fuel injectors with the one hole. Um, and from my research too, it looks like the fuel injectors are kind of grouped into a different couple years, right? So 87 to 90 was one set of fuel injectors. And you'll see this in the link that I'll send you to. 91 to 95, 96 to 98, and then 99 to 01. And throughout those years, um, pretty much the 87 to 98 were the EV1 connectors, connectors, the Bosch EV1 connectors, and then 99 to 01 were your EV6 connectors. Just an upgrade, right? Once uh, the EV1s are more square with a little metal, uh, I guess like spring connector, and then the EV6s are a little bit rounder uh, with, and they also have like a red release cap. And you'll see when we do the, uh, because I'm working on a 99 XJ, we'll see the, uh, the little red, uh, I guess, uh, lock connector that you have to move um, to take the fuel injector off. So um, again, I'll leave the link in the uh, description so you can read the, uh, to your heart's delight all of the technical aspects of the different uh, fuel injectors. You can pull fuel injectors from a neon, from a junkyard. Um, I'll tell you what though, um, I guess when I had my WJ about a year and a half ago, I had gotten a couple um, fuel injectors off eBay I uh, did all the cross-reference, thought it'd be a good deal, and the thing ran rich as crazy. I got codes and everything everywhere. Um, so I guess you kind of get what you pay for, right? These were over, uh, again, I bought them from K Suspension. Uh, they were over, just, just a little over 100 bucks. Um, but the ones I got off eBay were like 30 bucks. So you get what you pay for, folks. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping that's not the case here, but everything that I've read, K Suspension's a real deal. And... Um, which I'm sure it is, and uh, we shouldn't have any uh, rich, uh, you know, bank one, bank two kind of a thing, so we we'll, want we'll to avoid that. Okay, so I'm working outside today, so I have plenty of natural bright light on my engine compartment right now, which is really great. Ah, oh, I tell you, all the dust is really killing me. Um, so what we're going to do now, our main goal is to take off this fuel rail right here with these connectors. So there's a couple things we need to do prior to that in order to get to the connectors and remove the fuel rail. Um, you'll see we have the, uh, the the bracket for the throttle, the kick down cable, and the um, ah geez, the um, cruise control. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, a couple bolts here that have that bracket onto the intake manifold, and you'll see uh, a few bolts. Pardon me here. I'm just kind of doing it live in living color. A couple bolts here. There's some bolts, there's a bolt here, if I can get you on up there. And there's some bolts here. So really what you're doing is, we're gonna take this off, we're gonna grab this hose off, and take a couple 10, and again, these are all 10 millimeter bolts. Um, we're gonna disconnect the fuel rail, um, and that requires a special little um, tool, and I'll bring that out too, and I'll show you what that's all about. But it's super simple. Uh, the Schrader valve, uh, we're not gonna do it quite yet, because I don't have a little rag under here. Uh, but fuel pressure, we'll want to release this before we start taking the fuel rail off or we'll have, you know, fuel kind of spraying all over ourselves and nobody really likes that. So, um, why don't we do a couple of the more, um, I guess non-straightforward things and then I won't bore you guys with removing, you know, six, eight, seven, uh, 10 millimeter bolts. So to get a baseline on the current miles per gallon and the engine idle, we'll go on ahead and take a look at those two things now before we change anything kind of have it like as our control for this experiment. Okay, so real world uh, average economy right now. I did a lot of driving around town yesterday, uh, but I did take a picture of the average miles per gallon when I was driving to and from work, which is pretty much all highway. And I was getting 19.2 miles at a gallon. Uh, but right now this is uh, fooling around town. So I got 18.9 miles at a gallon, not so bad. Pretty good for a 
21-year-old vehicle uh, with a straight six. Okay, as you can see, it's pretty smooth idle right now. Um, doing this more as a baseline, right, to see if we can tell a difference, audible, visual difference. I guess we should put maybe a cup of water on top of the uh, valve cover <laughs> to see if uh, it's less vibrations. But, you know, hey, look, I don't have a cup of water. Pretty smooth, no issues. Gotta love the straight six. It's a beautiful motor. And you guys know it's killing me that that valve cover is dusty and dirty. And wait until you see the back of the uh, intake manifold. It's, it's, it's taking all of my energy and my resistance to not take the entire intake manifold off and repaint it. But I don't have time for that today. All we're doing is the fuel injectors. Um, we're not doing fuel injectors and intake manifold and exhaust because you know as soon as I take the uh, intake manifold off, I'll break a couple of exhaust bolts and we'll be <laughs> we'll really be screwed. We want to release the pressure on the fuel rail, so we'll just take a screwdriver and push a little Schrader valve in. Some fuel will spray out. Just be careful. And that's basically it. Very anticlimactic. So this will get all the built-up pressure from the fuel rail sitting overnight or whatever. And I believe this is for double check. Yep, okay, so there'll still be fuel in the fuel rail, but it won't be pressurized, so you won't get it sprayed all over you. The only thing it might do is drip all over when you take the fuel rail out, but there'll be no uh, uh, no spraying, which this is great. little retaining clip off, and I believe it's just uh, tough to do with one hand. I don't have my little camera holder, but I can just watch this spray all over me. I don't think it's has ever been removed, so you're gonna have to bear with me here, folks. Oh. <laughs> Goes the other way, ding dong. There we go, okay. And then finally, we're gonna take our 5 sixteenths. I can really use 3 8 5 sixteenths, uh, but this is the one that fits pretty good. Uh, fuel line disconnect tool. There's little fingers inside here, this little coupler, uh, that once these engage with that those little fingers, it'll release the pressure. And um, it's actually a pretty cool tool. Again, tough to do with one hand, but we should be able to get this done. You kind of push. And this should uh, pour it out. Again, watch a little fuel probably spill out, but we're going to get our trusty rag here. Do its job. This should do it. Let's see. Oh, baby, look at that. The magic of video. Uh, of course, it's locked up behind there. Yeah, there we go. Watch that fuel there. But now you can get a good shot of the um, the fingers that are inside there. And then we are good to go. Okay, so now I think what I'm going to attack next is we're going to remove these lines here. Uh, maybe, yeah, I'll remove both lines here. Take this off. And then what we'll also do is remove this bolt here. This is the uh, throttle cable like hold down, I guess you want to call it that. So let's, uh, we'll do this line, this line, this line, and we'll take this down. To get these little clips off the uh, throttle body linkage, I just apply a little, it's out of focus, a little pressure. And it's just connected by a, by a ball here. It's a little difficult to do, but all you're doing is just, <laughs> probably missed it because I, <laughs> I shaked, uh, but we'll just do the same thing here. So that one's like a ball and these, uh, really just push forward. Let's see if I can do that here. You can see here. See how they just push, it just pushes forward. And that just pushes forward. Quick pro tip, you might want to get some blue painter's tape or something to mark uh, the fuel injectors one through six. Um, with the uh, the wires, the memory, uh, it'll be pretty obvious which one is which, but like this one right here, if you're not careful, you could just sling this one over here. Um, so I'm just going to do that just for my sake, so I don't have to think about it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But what? What? Just wanted to see if you were paying attention, everybody. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Yeah, I'm gonna get some tape. Yeah, Mark labeled uh, fuel injector number one because two is obviously number two. Three is all by itself, four is all by itself, five and six are kind of like one and two. So I just labeled six 
uh, and obviously whatever is the last for the last one five will be the one before it and we're good to go now we have a loose fuel injector rail and I'm gonna set you up on a tripod and pull this bad boy out oh uh, so one of the things you want to be careful of too is that uh, plastic gets pretty uh, brittle uh, hot cold hot cold 21 years old so I broke the little locking clip on it um, that's the way it goes um, it has these little rubber booties inside so that should uh, hold it. Um, I've had plenty of Jeeps with um, the little clips missing and uh, they never popped out. But you can always two wire, go to the junkyard, pull another one, wire it up. But, you know, just be careful. Don't uh, don't manhandle it and uh, put your big meat hooks on it and give it give it to go. So, all right, let's uh, set you up on a tripod and pull this uh, fuel okay, rail. So now we'll want to uh, go ahead and remove the fuel rail. Um, it's going to be stuck in there a little bit because it has a little rubber o-rings and if you've never replaced the fuel injectors or had the fuel rail out you know it's been in there for a while so it might give you a little bit of trouble let's see here oh this one didn't give me a fight good okay come on now don't fight me i want to reconnect it and there we have it. See the little O-rings? And you can see the, come on, focus. Yeah, you really can't see. Yeah, you can see the one pin. But yeah, there's your fuel rail right there. Right. Oh, and some gas on my doll on the grill. Oh boy. Okay, so now that we have the fuel rail off, you'll see these little clips here retainer clips i affectionately refer to these as mf clips because they are kind of like spring loaded a little bit and if you're not careful they'll pop off and you go where did that little mother right so they're little mf clips to me there's six of them and they hold the fuel injector into the uh into the fuel injector uh rail so let's see i won't do all six here but the uh, best thing to do is to grab a flat edge right here Put it in there and put a rag over it. Pull up a little bit. And that's the uh, clip right there. And you notice it didn't go anywhere because I was putting my, my mitt over it. And then let's just, again, there's an O-ring in there. It's never been taken out before, so it's a little, come on. Come on, love. Drop my screwdriver. Oh, man. I wish, my, I wish my shop had air conditioning. I'll tell you that much. Let's pull this son of a... Come on there. Come on, you bastard. Whew, it's really in there. Yeah, folks, you might run into the fact that these fuel injectors are really in there. You might have to give it a, a, good, a good tug or two. And you don't want to bend your fuel rail either because then you're really gonna have a, a bad day i'm gonna give us about another two seconds and then i'm gonna cut the commercial ah yes success now the o-ring did not follow so you'll have to get in there with the pick and get the old o-ring out so i'm not going to bore you with five more struggles um, so we'll, uh, the, the magic of editing, we'll uh, have all these out when you come back. Okay, so we have uh, removed the old fuel injectors and we have the empty fuel rail. And you'll see it's just like a pocket to go in. It's killing me not to sand this down and repaint it, but in the essence of time, I'm going to let this go. Uh, Dan H., I know you would, uh, you would appreciate this being buffed out, sanded down, pour 15 and all sharpened up and trust me i'm right there with you brother but uh i just want to get these in i want to hear what this bad boy uh sounds like after they're installed but um here are the clips i think i've already showed you those but um let's see if i can get this to focus here you can see the one the one pin yeah you know it's not really going to do it for me hmm sorry about that Okay, so the next thing is we're going to want to break out the, sorry for the, oh gee whiz, the new fuel injectors. 
Uh, oh, nice and bright. And they're similar. They're similar where it counts, which is the connector. Overall length is the same. And uh, what we'll do is, first thing you're going to want to do, each one, is get a little Vaseline. Uh, and we're going to want to, before we insert these, uh, lube up the O-ring. So we'll go ahead and get that started. Okay, let's take a little bit of, not too much, just enough so it doesn't tear the O-ring. Can you see that? And we'll just install it. And you want to do an O-ring count to make sure you have all the old O-rings out. I've already done that. This kind of pushes in. A little bit more there. Oh, there we go. Slid right in. No problems at all. Okay. Five to go. Okay, now that all of the fuel injectors are in, we're going to want to put the MF clips back in. And they basically just, there's like a little ridge. And then you'll see it. There's a little ridge on either side of the fuel injector. And you'll just kind of be gentle. This is where you lose them all. And now it's locked in. And that's what it looks like right there. They spin and they turn, but uh, now the fuel injector is locked into the fuel rail. So we'll just do that five more times. Hey, what do you know? All of them are in place and I didn't lose one MF clip. Kind of bummed out, really. No, uh, not really. These are a pain in the ass to find. That's why every time I go to the u pull it, I always grab a couple and uh, I got them up here in a bag somewhere on my top of my workbench. But uh, let's just let's uh, take this outside and uh, see what's happening. Yeah, these four holes look pretty sweet, man. I like the orange too. Kind of sets it apart. Looks uh, probably gonna get five, ten horsepower out of the color itself. Yeah. Okay. So before you reinstall the fuel rails into the fuel injectors, you'll see inside the um, intake manifold where the fuel injectors sit. A little bit of carbon buildup. Um, you might want to. You feel inclined to clean that out um but just remember uh, on the other side of that is your valve you know valve train you know intake ex you know intake uh valves all that good stuff so that carbon buildup, you know if that falls in there it's probably not the best thing to do so if you if you must uh definitely um be very gentle and try not to drop any in there i mean i guess some of it will go in there uh but um, just try to be really careful installing um the, the fuel rail and uh, cleaning any of that, that that carbon. Jesus, look at the size of that finger. Uh, any of that carbon uh, in there, so. Okay, now that we've uh, put a little Vaseline on each one of the uh, O-rings for the uh, installation part, we'll go on ahead and gently throw these back in here. Gently throw, yes, gently. Gently wrench the sons of bitches back in. Yes, gently. A little bit of force. Don't get, ex don't get a sledgehammer in there. And then if it's faced the wrong way, you can just turn them the other way. So I suggest moving them in the right orientation before bolting it down. And installation is basically the opposite of uninstallation, right? <laughs> Yeah, put it together the same way you took it apart. So we'll just orient these all the right way. I really wish I could have gotten, I don't know. I, again, I'm gonna go back to my comment where I said I would have loved to have taken this whole intake manifold out, cleaned all of the holes out, spray painted it, buffed it out. Um, but this is a fuel injector video, not a how to clean your uh, intake manifold. So maybe we'll do that for another video. But I guess we wouldn't have to take these off, right? Because uh, they would just stay in there. Well, yes, you would, because you wouldn't want to get paint and crap all over it. So never mind. What am I talking about here? It's the heat, everybody, the heat. It's hotter than a $2 street walker. Sorry. 
Okay, so it's in, and uh, what we'll do now is just uh, number one. Goes into number one. I take the tape off. And then we'll do the rest of the six. Next, we'll reinstall the mounting hardware. Okay, that just about does it. And just cinch them up, make sure they're all tight. And the next thing we'll do is we'll just uh, reinstall the, the fuel line under the fuel rail, clip that in. We'll reinstall the uh, throttle cable brackets put back the air tubes and uh, that should be about it. And then the last thing we'll need to do is reset the computer and I'll go over that with you when we get to that point. Okay, so one of the final and probably the most critical step is to reset the PCM. So the best way to do that and the factory way to do it from my uh, research uh, is to disconnect the battery, uh, both positive and negative and then you touch both positive and negative ends, the, the uh, terminals, not the, don't connect the ends, the, you'll, you'll see, just pictures are a thousand words. Loosen that up, loosen that up. Okay, so now that you have both of these loose, you pick them up and you touch these for 30 seconds. Come here now. Okay, so now that you've had these touching for about 30 seconds, go on ahead and reconnect them, tighten them up. And then the final step is we will go on ahead and um, put the key, well, I'll show you over there, but just tighten these bad boys up and then we'll go inside the Jeep. Make sure they're nice and snug. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Oh, those are nice and tight. Toy, like a toyga, like a toyga, he says. So the final step in resetting your PCM is to key in the ignition all the way to the on position, but not the start position. Headlights on, headlights off, turn it off, your PCM is reset. So disconnect the battery, hold the negative and positive, negative and positive together for 30 seconds. And then key in the on position, headlights on, headlights off, and you're good to go. So what? So basically what we're doing is the computer will now have to relearn the fuel mapping. Uh, so it'll lean it out, rich it up, whatever it needs. So uh, when you first start it up, it's going to be, um, can't even see my face. Maybe that's a good thing. It's going to be a little lean. Oh, I'll have to tell you about this a little bit later. Um, it's going to be a little rough because the computer is starting to learn the um, fuel mapping. So as soon as you start it, it'll be just a little bit rough and then it'll lean out. And obviously through more drive cycles, you'll notice the, uh, the, the motor running a lot smoother. So let's crank it up. Well, it starts, that's a good sign. Cool. Now is get to the economy and we'll do a quick, uh, you can't even see, we'll do a quick reset and we'll drop that down to zero. Running pretty good. You can hear the little fuel injectors ticking away. Like I was saying, as the computer starts relearning the fuel mapping strategy, uh, drive cycles, it'll smoothen out. It'll get a whole lot. Uh, uh, it'll basically just learn how to do all the fuel, short-term fuel, long-term fuel, all that good stuff. But it's running, looks good, no fuel leaks. Looks like our mission has uh, been accomplished. Well, that wraps up our video on the four-hole fuel injector install. Hope you enjoyed it. 
If you have any questions, just leave me a question in the comment box and I'll get back to you. Uh, I'll also leave some links to some technical uh, information on fuel injectors. So uh, I'll leave that for you so you guys can follow up and look at some real good technical info. Uh, kids are out in the uh, <laughs> industry having a good time. But uh, hey, look, this is our first video uh, post 1000 uh, YouTube subscribers. So uh, thank you very much for all of the folks that have subscribed and my future subscribers. I hope good quality videos like this will um, uh, find your find it itself to your way, if I can get that out. And uh, you'll learn some good information from me. And um, I'll leave uh, links to uh, the case suspension website where I found these uh, fuel injectors. And um, if you have any other questions, uh, just leave me a comment. I appreciate the feedback. You know, I've learned a lot in the last uh, 1,000 uh, YouTube subscribers. I've gotten some really good feedback. Uh, some great, great positive feedback. I've also gotten some really good uh, technical corrections as far as I know. I've gotten I've gotten blazed uh, a couple times on my air conditioner uh, video, and uh, that was one of my first videos. Um, so I hit the highlights. Um, I think there were some p potentially some technical things I might have missed. Uh, you got to think about it too, right? There's different ways of doing things, so a lot of folks have different ways of, of doing kind of the same job. So uh, I'm learning every day, as I'm sure you are too. Hence why we're all on YouTube. So it was really good. I've gotten some really funny comments. Uh, I've gotten some really good constructive criticism. And I've gotten blazed on a couple things. But you know what? You have to have a tough skin when you're on YouTube. And I do. So I really appreciate it. And everybody's kind of joining in. So Hello, fam. <clears throat> these are the owners here. So this will be their Jeep one day. So i got to take good care of it. Subscribe so. down below. <laughs> yeah. Subscribe. And like. And like. And, and turn on the notification bell so you get notified like every button. time he posts a video. I don't think I can top that. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next video. Take care.